Welcome to video number 6 for Physics 102. This video explores the following of a coin problem that you did in class using multiple different coordinate systems. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you that coordinate systems are completely arbitrary things that we invent to help us solve the problems. If you'd like a refresher on how to set up a coordinate system, I'd like to refer you to slide number 89 of the Fundamentals Lecture Series. As an example of the arbitrariness of coordinate systems, let's consider this problem from slide number 90 of the Fundamentals Unit. The xy coordinates of point P in the red coordinate system are 7, 3. The question is, what are the coordinates in the blue coordinate system? They're 3, 4. The point P in the blue coordinate system is 3 units from the origin in the positive x direction and four units from the origin in the positive y direction. In both cases, we're considering the same point P. It's just how we represent that point P depends upon the coordinate system we're using. Now let's move on to the problem from class to explore this in a little bit more concrete example. The problem from class was that a coin of mass 6.5 grams falls from the top of a 1.07 meter tube to the bottom. The question was, how long does it take for the coin to complete the trip? Now in class, we saw that the acceleration of the coin was constant, and thus we could apply our kinematic equations to this example. We argued in class that the appropriate kinematic equation in this case is the one you see here, because we're interested in connecting the distance, which is on the left side of this equation, to the time it takes for the coin to fall, which is on the right. In this particular example, the initial velocity of the coin, v0, is equal to zero, because the coin is just being dropped. Following the algebra you did in class, we can conclude that the time it takes for the coin to hit the bottom of the tube is given by this expression. Now in class, the coordinate system you chose to find the direction of the coin's motion to be y, with the positive y direction pointing upwards. In addition to the direction, you must also choose an origin when defining a coordinate system. In class, you define the origin of the coordinate system to be at the bottom of the tube. So the bottom of the tube was thus defined to be y equals 0. And therefore, the initial position of the coin at the top of the tube would be at y equals 1.07 meters. Translating this into our variables for our time expression, we have that the initial position of the coin, which is represented by y0, was equal to 1.07 meters. And the final position of the coin would therefore be 0 meters, the bottom of the tube. The acceleration in this case was negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The negative sign is because the acceleration is down towards the bottom of the tube, and the positive direction is defined to be up, thus the acceleration is opposite in direction to what we define to be positive. So therefore, the acceleration is negative. Substituting these values into our expression, we see that these two negative signs cancel each other. The result is that what's under the square root sign is positive, which is a good thing, and we get a final result that you achieved in class of 0.47 seconds. Now let's consider a different coordinate system. I'm still choosing the direction of the coin's motion to be y, and I'm still choosing the positive direction of y to be up. This time, however, I'm placing the origin of the, my coordinate system at the initial position of the coin. Translating this into our variables for our time expression, we have that the initial position, y0, in this case, is 0 meters, and the final position of the coin is now going to be negative 1.07 meters. The coin in this case always has a negative position. It starts from zero and goes down, so it becomes more and more negative as it falls. The acceleration in this case, however, is still negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Remember, we've defined the positive direction to be up. The acceleration is still down, so the acceleration in this case is still a negative quantity. Substituting these values into our time expression, we see now it's these two negative signs that cancel. The result is we still have a positive 
value under our square root. And we still get the same final answer, 0 0.47 seconds. This is important. Our coordinate systems are made up by us. They're completely fictitious. Thus, the answers to our physics problems can't possibly depend upon what coordinate systems we've chosen. We will always get 0 0.47 seconds for this problem, regardless of how we define our coordinate system. Let's think about one more coordinate system. In this case, I've defined the positive y direction to be down. This is perhaps somewhat counterintuitive to what you would normally think of, but coordinate systems are fictitious. I can define positive y to be in whatever direction I want. I've just happened to have chosen down. I've also chosen the origin of my coordinate system to be the initial position of the coin. Trying to translate this into our variables for our expression, we therefore have that in this coordinate system, the initial position of the coin, y naught, is 0 meters. Your quiz for this video is to figure out what is the final position y and what is the acceleration a sub y in this particular case. This concludes this video.